think PPT is visible. My presentation is visible. Yes, yes. Okay, so I will just uh, quickly uh, finish this linear things uh, now because this second part is mostly for the time history analysis and ground motion characteristics. So let us quickly finish this uh, some of the parameters and then we will go for uh, how to perform linear time history analysis. So that may be useful for you. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm talking about a load combination first so that uh, we have already seen how which type of the combination to be included uh, in which type of analysis. Right, so whenever your combinations means you can combine uh, two lateral load uh, direction at a time simultaneously, or maybe two lateral direction and one vertical effect also. So in that case, your combinations will be different. <clears throat> okay, now here you can see that uh, how to consider the vertical acceleration effect. So if you want to consider the vertical acceleration case spectral case, how to include that in your analysis. So there is a clause 6.4.6 of IS code, which says your AV value, that is the spectral acceleration for vertical uh, acceleration case, uh, sorry, not spectral acceleration, design base shear uh, coefficient for uh, spectral uh, vertical acceleration case uh, should be equal to this one. So which is two third of uh, Z by two I by R. And then SA by G, you have to consider equal to 2.5. So the steps will be uh, simple then in that case. What you need to do is you need to calculate this factor, uh, which is 2 thirds Z by 2 I by R, right? So you first calculate this uh, factor, 2 thirds Z by 2 I by R. That is one thing that is equal to your AV. And then when you assign a response spectrum function, in that case, you make this all this value equal to 2.5 in a function. Uh, okay, let, let me show that so that uh, you can understand. So let me show this to you. Okay, here. So when you define a function here, so let's say a response spectrum function you are defining. So uh, let us let us use this IS1893-2016 spectrum. So 1893 and new function. So here there is an option. You can convert it to user defined, right? So click this option. Now it is converted to user defined and put all this value equal to 2.5 for all uh, time periods. For all time period, put these values equal to 2.5 here for all values. Okay, and say modify, modify. So that is the function for your vertical acceleration. That is called as only function. Uh, you can name that function, any name you can put here. Okay, so that is the first thing you need to do. Secondly, let us go back to our PPT again. So, Okay, so that is the first thing you need to do. Secondly, you have to calculate that factor as I told you, uh, this factor, uh, which is your Z by 2 I by R, two third of Z by 2 I by R S A by G, this factor. Okay, and then uh, you need to multiply this factor with the maximum spectral, maximum uh, scale factor obtained from the lateral load cases that means the response spectra in x and y direction so you have got a response spectra value in x and y direction uh, scale factor that scale factor to be multiplied with this scale factor to assign a vertical acceleration load case right so you just say here u3 direction and then scale factor will be this coefficients multiplied by the maximum scale factor of uh, RSX uh, spectra X and spectra Y. So your this scale factor will now become two thirds Z by two I by R into maximum of spectral X and spectral Y acceleration. And function, as I told you, you have to define like this for all values of uh, the time period. Your uh, uh, this spectral acceleration should be equal to two point five. So that is how you can define the vertical acceleration in E tabs. Now let us uh, look at some of the case regarding the P delta analysis. As I told you, this is a nonlinear case. 
and then this is a, a structure level nonlinearity that is geometric nonlinearity. There is a simple option. So you can set this iterative base on load and then you can add maybe 1.2 dead load and 1.2 lie load as a iterative uh, load that is P to be considered in P delta analysis. That's it. So that is the option. You can preset P delta option so that the program will use P delta analysis uh, for your uh, structure. And then there is, of course, this uh, clause is there, which is clause 7 of IS 161700. Uh, then to consider the uh, P delta analysis. So 16700 is for high rise building, that is the buildings which are above 50 meters. So there it is compulsory that you should consider the P delta effect. And then for other building, IS 1893 is applicable. So you have to decide upon whether to P delta effect to be included in your analysis or not. Okay. Then the most important thing, uh, uh, which is a crack section properties, right? So when you use or when you design your structure, uh, even if the um, analysis is linear and then when you start designing your structure, you should not use the uncracked section properties. And why it is so? Because we are assuming that in a linear analysis uh, and design that our section is cracked itself, right? So uh, it, it may not be a, a visible cracking or a huge cracking, but the section is cracked. That means your crack width may be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or 0 0.3 as per IS 4.56. So section is cracked. This means that whatever the strength of the concrete uh, in a tensile zone should be neglected. So this is, let's say, this is your neutral axis. So whatever the concrete we are assuming, the strength of the concrete we are considering for design below neutral axis, that should be neglected. So that uh, that converts your section into a transform section where all tension is assigned to a steel and uh, and the concrete in the tensile zone is neglected. So this is what we call it as a transform section. And we should use uh, the properties of this transform section only for our design. Otherwise, your design uh, using gross section is not uh, accurate or, or it may not be correct, right? So you should use this transform section where uh, the strength of the concrete in compression zone is considered and the strength of the concrete in tensile zone is ignored, right? And for that, we are modifying our properties of the cross section with certain values. And that is called as a crack sectional property. That means we are putting some factors to these calculated values uh, of gross properties like moment of inertia uh, and other properties, right? Uh, so uh, now it is it is modified to this section. As you know that you can uh, you can see here because we are neglecting the strength of the section concrete in tension zone. Naturally, the strength of the strength of the crack section, that is the transform section, will be less than the gross section. So that's why all these coefficients. These are the coefficient to be used uh, for using the crack sectional properties. You can observe here all the, these coefficients are less than one. All these coefficients are less than one. Sometimes you may use a 0 0.01 to completely neglect that effect or sometimes it is 0 0.25, 0 0.7 like that. So for every code, this is for 16700 and this is for 1893. 1893 does not give any coefficient for serviceability load case. That is the working load case. But uh, it will give uh, the coefficient for strength calculation. And then if you find this 16700 for serviceability as well as for strain, the coefficients are given. So again, this is a very uh, large, uh, big discussion if you go into the crack section modification properties. So I will not go into the depth, but you should remember that this uh, coefficient to be used as per the code applicable, whether it is 16700 or 1893 for uh, uh, assigning the crack section properties. And where you should assign, there are two ways of assigning this crack sectional properties. One at a cross section level uh, where you define your cross section itself. There you can uh, modify the properties, uh, which is here. You can see here, this is at the cross section level. And one 
either you can select a particular component and then go for the sectional properties modifier there also you can assign so there are two ways of assigning one is at the cross section level uh, when you define your sectional properties and one is at the uh, member level when you actually select the member and assign the property modifiers to them but this should be included when you perform your uh, structural design not for the analysis for design design it is uh, essential right because we are in the linear range and we are assuming that our section is cracked when we design the section okay so that's why this is very important term and even if you do not use this what will happen to your structure actually uh, you are considering the moment of inertia and all sectional properties which is gross sectional properties this one and naturally in that case your stiffness that is k for the structure will be more and it will attract more forces and then of course the design demand on that particular element will be more okay so k is more means the stiffness is more for the element and the stiffness is more means it will attract more forces and then your design uh, is not economical so use the crack sectional properties uh, for design of the members okay so now when you perform a response spectra analysis there are two terms which is used one is modal analysis and another one is direct integration uh, method that uh, is already discussed but let me show you what uh, the software will exactly do in these two particular load cases here you can see here the software has got the modal responses uh, for each of the mode uh, it may be translational response means the modal translation is there it may be rotation or it may be a combination of translational and rotation 